Hello and welcome to NEO Varsity Live. I'm Dave Casillo, joined by Scott Pasco and Joe Noga. We're going to be breaking down everything going on in high school football in Northeast Ohio. Get involved, tweet us at hashtag NEO Varsity. Right below this video, there's comments on the page. You can ask us questions and we'll ask our players, our experts on the air. And we're going to start things off in this big week nine with a little opening kickoff uh, where I'm going to throw some questions at you, give me some quick answers. Mm -hmm. First question, uh, Scott. What team needs to win most its final two games? Quite a few, but I'm going to go with Villa Angela St. Joseph. Uh, they're 10th in their region. Uh, they end up with teams that have six and five wins. So that's a lot of computer points. Probably get them up into the, into the playoffs. Joe. Uh, Brunswick needs, uh, needs to beat their rival Strongsville this week if they want to have any chance of making the playoffs. What playoff bubble team would be most dangerous if they made it? Uh, you know, North Olmstead. Uh, they have three losses. They uh, took a uh, uh, Berea Mid Park to overtime, lost by about four to Brexville, a uh, touchdown to North Ridgeville. I think they're a dangerous team. What about you, Joe? Uh, Stowe is a pretty dangerous bubble team. Right now they're outside the playoff picture. Uh, win over Elyria puts them back in. Big, big game this week, 1v2, Menor and Hudson. Uh, who is the most important player in that game, Scott? I, I think the game comes down to the secondaries, but if I had to pick one player to, to sway it one way or the other, I'm going to say Doherty, Eddie Doherty. Great. And Jeff? Uh, Jake Floria, guy who, you know, it's his, it really his first time in this, in the, uh, this game. So uh, Jake Floria, the quarterback for Mentor. A team that's come on strong lately after a sort of a rocky start, St. Vincent, St. Mary. Are they a state title threat? Uh, I don't think so at this point. I think they've lost too much. Uh, they're a team that can certainly do some damage in their region, but I don't think they could all get over. Joe? Uh, I think St. Vincent, St. Mary, uh, they're in a really tough region. Poland Seminary 7-1, and one, and they're only ranked 7th in that region. So... Uh, St. Vincent uh, St. Mary has a tough road to, to get through to, to make it to the championship. A team similar to them in that they got off to a slow start and now have come on strong. Glenville, uh, chances they win a playoff game. Scott? Word is uh, quarterback Marcus Drish could be back for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, if they can avoid a 7 or 8 seed in a first round match with Bedford or Mayfield, mm -hmm. then I think chances are very good they win. Joe? Uh, you know, I give them about an 82% chance mm -hmm. of pulling numbers out of the air. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I, I think they'll be in that 4-5 range uh, in, in terms of playoff seeds. Great. Um, you're out of a lot of games. Best song you've ever heard a marching band play? Rock and Roll All Night by Kiss. <laughs> I don't, I don't hear that a lot. Yeah. I was, uh, week six, I was at Brush for Garfield Heights and Brush. The Garfield Heights band played uh, Problem by Ariana Grande. I, I was impressed. You know Ariana Grande. <laughs> I, I know that song, and I'm not embarrassed about it. Big fan over there. All right. <laughs> Arguably the best game of the year has been that week one overtime game between Mayfield and Nordonia. If they played right now, who would win? Uh, I'd still go with Nordonia, although Mayfield's had three close games since then and won them all. Maybe they learned something in, those, in that game that's helped them, but I think maybe Nordonia comes out on top. Joe? Mayfield's knocked off Solon. They've gotten better each week. Uh, I, I think Mayfield will pull the upset in that game. Another hypothetical, Aurora and Kirtland, both undefeated. What would happen if they played each other? Aurora wins. It's not so much talent as much as two-way players and size of the kids on the line. I think Aurora wins that. Joe? Yeah, I think Scott uh, pointed out one time that uh, Kirtland only has a couple of players over 220 pounds. Uh, I think Aurora would just overwhelm them. Now, Solon, they had a strong start, but they've really been sliding lately, uh, playing tough teams, though. Uh, can they win a playoff game? It depends on if they're on the road or at home. If you look at the bottom half of Region 1, there are some teams I think they would be favored against. Mm -hmm. um, but, but on the road, playing those top teams, I don't, I don't think so. Joe? Uh, right now, Drew Pasteur's uh, Fantastic 50 site has them playing Olentangy Liberty Powell on the road. It's a long drive. It's a team that we don't know too much about. Uh, I'd say probably not. Team that's been a huge surprise, Midview. Can they win the state title? I would have to go with no at this point. I don't know if they hang with Nordonia, um, and I know that neither one of those teams, I think, are going to be the favorite against a team like LaSalle from Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, so I would have to say no. Joe? Uh, we know that they can score with anybody. We know that they can throw the ball and move the ball. Uh, can they play enough defense to win a championship? Probably not. All right. Who is going to be the best team that will miss the playoffs? Scott? <sighs> You know, and they might not miss it. It depends on how they do the last couple of weeks, but I'd say Lake Catholic. They mm -hmm. have two wins. They played everybody tough, it seems. St. V, uh, Walsh, um, not Walsh, but uh, uh, last week Benedictine, mm -hmm. uh, Archbishop Hoban. Uh, so I'd say that's a team that could give anybody fits. Joe, what about you? Riverside needs wins against Willoughby South and Madison in the final two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd say they're a pretty decent team, then they're probably not going to make the playoffs. Huge game in a small conference, Keystone and Buckeye. Both teams really need a win to make the playoffs, and it's for the division title. 
Who wins that one? I say Keystone. They th think they've beaten two winning teams. I, Buckeye can't say the same, I think. Yeah. Uh, so. Just to be argumentative, I'm going to say Buckeye. Uh, you know, magic season for the Bucks. Great. There you go. All right, guys. Well, um, we'll see how those predictions hold up. Uh, we're now going to move on to a, a weekly feature here on our NEO Varsity Live show. It's our pop quiz. We ask you a, uh, a question early in the show every week, and you have a, some chances to answer it. You can tweet us at hashtag NEO Varsity, and uh, we'll give you the answer later on in the show. This week's question, how many undefeated teams are there in the Cleveland.com top 25 poll? And we got four options, A, 7, B, 6, C, 4, or D, 9. So remember, tweet us at hashtag NEO Varsity with your response, and at the end of the show, we will reveal the answer. Right now, we are joined by three players on three of the best teams in all of Northeast Ohio, all in Division I. We got J.D. Masco of Menor, we got Joe Charpentier of Hudson, and Draymond Jones of St. Ignatius. St. Ignatius, how are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing Great. good. Doing well. Okay, so um, you're obviously on strong teams. You'll probably, you will be in the postseason. Uh, how do you prepare for a postseason game, J.D.? Uh, I think it's all just about staying calm and just playing it like any other game you would throughout the regular season. Joe, what about you? I would definitely agree with JD. Uh, having a good week of practice, playing your game, uh, just being consistent. Um, hard week of practice and just great preparation. Uh, what do you think um, has been the key to getting off to such a strong start being undefeated this year, JD? Uh, well, I think it just comes to our off-season work and being ready to uh, prepare for the season during the off-season. Joe, same question for you. Uh, great preparation by the coaches and uh, dedication by the players. And what about you? Uh, why is St. Ignatius off to a, a strong start this year? Well, after our, four, our first loss against Menor, um, we really stepped it up these past weeks and just played to our best. Now, um, three of the better teams in the area. Do you like playing with a target on your back, JD? Um, sometimes. I mean, I kind of like enjoying being the underdog. I think it's a lot more fun to win that game, but it's okay. Joe, what about you? Uh, I definitely... Uh, as a team, we like, to, we like to play like that, and uh, you do like to be underdog every once in a while, but it's, it's fun to play all those big games. Doesn't matter what your record is, St. Ignatius has a target on his back. Uh, how do you like that, Draymond? Uh, it's a great feeling. I mean, knowing that people notice us is a, great, um, is a great feeling all the time because we know we have to go out there and play to our best. All right, the two of you will be uh, not so, as friendly as you are right now on Thursday night. Uh, J.D., uh, how do, what is it going to take for you guys to beat Hudson? I think we need to play mistake free. We can't let them make the big plays. I know they're going to make some of them, but we got to try and limit those and just play mistake free. Joe, how uh, do you mean that? Same thing. I play a uh, perfect game. Can't make any big mistakes. Uh, limit penalties, and uh, we just got to play our game. Jamie, let's turn the expert role over to you. You played both these teams. What does each team do well? Well, Minner and their spread offense is amazing. Um, I feel like we prepare well, but there's still times when they can have the upper hand on us. And Hudson and, and playing them last year, we, we really had to prepare, you know, because their quarterbacks were really good and the receivers were good. And we already know what type of team they were from watching film, so, you know, it's just a lot of work. Draymond, you're playing a national schedule. What is it like to, you know, travel to New Jersey and places across the country to play games? Uh, well, it's a great experience getting nor notoriety like that. And, um, you know, playing in New Jersey, that was, a, that was a great atmosphere for us. Even though we lost, I mean, double overtime, it was just a fun experience. And um, Joe, what's the biggest reason uh, for you to have all the success you're having individually this year? Uh, great uh, preparation by the coaches, great game planning. Uh, coaches, coaches give me a lot of opportunities this year, and uh, I think I've made the best of it. And J.D., obviously Menor had a really good team last year. What's the biggest difference between last year's team and this year's team? I think we're just more balanced this year. We've, got, we've gotten better in all phases of the game and can compete against anyone. Great. Um, now, for the three of you, uh, what, when you're getting ready for a game, what, what's the biggest key for you in mental preparation? Uh, I just like to stay calm. I don't like to be the guy that goes crazy before a game. I just stay calm and focused. Joe, how do you mentally prepare? Uh, I like to be relaxed, just go over uh, the game plan in my head, stay focused. And Draymond? Uh, just like what JD said, just be relaxed, you know, talk to teammates, goof around a little bit, but know the seriousness of the game. Great. Um, now, in the off-season, uh, you do a lot of things. What thing that you do in the off-season is helping you the most right now? Uh, I think it's individual linebacker drills and watching a little bit of film from last year, thing, seeing things that you can still improve on in the off-season. Joe, what about you? Uh, I would say meeting as a, uh, as a team a lot, just about being around the team. Group activities really keeps the team unity strong. And Jeremiah, what helps you from the off-season? Uh, you know, 
being with my teammates a lot, you know, we always, we always have lifting early in the mornings and that really brings us together. Trayvon, uh, we had a question from a commenter here, uh, Joe. The question is, um, do you think that St. Ignatius has improved since the loss to Paramus Catholic? And um, how does it feel to beat the team that you did this past weekend? Um, well, we've improved tremendously, especially having our quarterback back, Dennis, after his injury. And um, beating Muller, that was a huge win for us, you know, especially because people didn't expect us to win. So mm -hmm. that was a big upside for us. Great. Uh, question for all of you now. Uh, what's the best advice you've ever gotten from a coach? Uh, I think last year at the end when we lost the state championship, it was just remember this feeling, remember it for next year, and be play every game like it's your last. Joe, what about you? Uh, coaches always say just uh, trust, have trust in your coaches, have trust in yourself, and have trust in your teammates that they're going to get the job done. Okay. And Draymond, what's the best advice you've gotten? Um, almost every game Coach Kyle tells us we have to believe. And that's just, I think that right there is like one of the greatest quotes we ever got. Great. All right, we'll be back with you guys later. We're going to have it be a little more fun, uh, not all the serious game talk in here. Uh, but right now, we're going to throw it over to um, our not-so-serious side that we have sometimes at the office. It isn't just all taking box scores and writing game recaps. Uh, we've got a game that we like to play in the office uh, with some of our best football players in the area. So um, check it out. This is our, our video for this week. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the performance that was disappointing. The game was pretty awesome. Oh. He just made it. No. He just made one. He's played quarterback all season. Uh oh. 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 Man, Lemon Cloud goes over the balcony. How difficult is it to drop that ball in a bucket? Very difficult is you got to find your shot just like you got to find your jump shot when you're playing basketball. Well, it, you, it, London, is it is it a power game or is it a finesse game? Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I'm more of a power dude, so I can't really finesse it, so it, it's just tough. Chairman, you, catching them or throwing them? What's, what's easier? Man, catching them. Catching them. It's a finesse game. It's tricky. It looks four or five. This is five, I think. Oh, no, no high school player has, has put one in the bucket yet. Uh, how disappointed are you with your performance? I, I'm very disappointed. I've already scheduled a practice set up Monday, so we're going to have to get this done. Yeah, it's very disappointing. I'm coming back next year. Sure. Dustin, you know, you, you'll be back here uh, for media day next year. You, you want an opportunity at this? Definitely want another shot at it. Well, so, uh, it looks. Hey, you guys have been the most competitive group that we've had so far. So uh, thanks and congrats. Yeah, thanks for coming out. All right, welcome back. Each week here on Cleveland.com, we post a high school roundtable topic, and we ask for your feedback, and then we discuss the results here on NEO Varsity Live. The uh, question this week is: Should the winner of Hudson and Menor be considered the best Division One team in the state? Um, we, we provided a yes or no poll, and uh, before the show, we checked it out, and 67% to 32%, uh, the result uh, was overwhelmingly no. Um, the problem was nobody really gave us an idea of who they thought should be number one. Um, so I'm curious, Joe, for your take on this, who, who should be the number one team in the state? Well, first I want to invite our, our users to, to go ahead and please feel free to find that post and comment, uh, mm -hmm. and leave us your, your ideas of who should be number one. But uh, for me, uh, St. Xavier, uh, the St. Ignatius opponent this weekend, uh, they've got Ben Glines, uh, a Boston College commit. They've got Justin Hilliard, a uh, Ohio State uh, uh, commit at linebacker. Uh, they're they're going to be a tough team for, for St. Ignatius this week, and I think uh, you know, if they can come out ahead in that game, they, they, they would get a number one vote from me. 
I have the I do the Division One uh, ballot for Cleveland.com's ballot for uh, the AP State poll, and I have St. Xavier uh, two behind Huber Heights Wayne. Um, I had St. Edward and Muller up there earlier in the season. Some losses dropped them back. Uh, I think you could make an argument that maybe seven teams could should be number one. The problem is you could make an argument against those seven teams, whether it's uh, they haven't played anybody of note yet or they have losses. Um, so I'm kind of like skirting the issue of the real question here. But uh, I think as far as Hudson and Menor goes, unless that game's a blowout one way or the other, I don't know that I move one of those teams to number one in the state. Yeah, I, I think a, a lopsided win in that would would go a long way for whoever wins that game, uh, you know, having a, 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 a real beef for number one. That's true. Okay. Uh, we're going to move to our game time segment, and I am joined by Walsh Jesuit senior safety and running back Anthony Rosam. Momentarily, I will be joined by <laughs> Walsh <laughs> Jesuit senior safety and running back Anthony Rosam. Uh, the Warriors are six and two, and currently they're ranked number uh, they're sixth in the Division Two Region Four uh, playoff chase. Uh, this week, they could really make a big statement uh, with a win against Benedictine. Um, Anthony, uh, good to have you with us. Uh, hi, good to be here. All right. Uh, I was just going over uh, some of the details of uh, the Warriors' season, 6-2 and two to this point uh, in the Division II Region Four playoff chase. Anthony, what's the, what's the key to, uh, for the Bengals to take down Benedictine, or uh, for the Warriors to take down Benedictine this week? Uh, we got to stop the run. Uh, they uh... They're a running team dominantly, and uh, they have really good athletes at all those positions. So we're going to have to play uh, fundamental football and really game tackle and try to, try to take down their speed. All right. Well, uh, the segment here is game time, and we're going to play a little uh, variation on the Price is Right. Uh, we're going to use NFL statistics. I'm going to give you an NFL stat from Week 7, and you tell me if the actual number is higher or lower. Okay, you need three out of five to win. Are you, are you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay, uh, Peyton Manning just set the career passing touchdown mark, but how many career rushing touchdowns does Peyton Manning have? Is it higher or lower than 15? Uh, I'm going to say uh, lower. The number is higher. He's got 18 career rushing touchdowns. Right now. Yeah. Uh, next question, Denard Robinson of Jacksonville had his first 100-yard rushing game against the Browns this week. Uh, was Robinson's rushing total higher or lower than 130 yards? Uh, can you repeat that question again? I, I didn't really hear it. That's okay. Was Denard Robinson's rushing total this year, uh, this week against the Browns, higher or lower than 130? I did not. Lower. Uh, you're correct. It was 127. All right. Next question. Russell Wilson of Seattle is the NFL leader among quarterbacks in rushing yardage this season. Was his week seven total against St. Louis higher or lower than 96 yards? Uh, higher. You're correct. 106 yards for Russell Wilson this week against St. Louis. Next question is Golden Tate for Detroit was the week seven leader in receptions. Was his catch total higher or lower than 11? Uh, I'm going to say lower. You're correct. It was lower at 10. You've, you've won the game. Anthony Rosams, our, our first call-in player for, on, on any of RC Live to, to win the game. Uh, Anthony, congratulations. Maybe this, is well, a, thank uh, you. maybe this is a sign of good things to come for the Warriors, uh, a little upset-minded against Benedictine this week. Uh, what do you have in store? What are you looking forward to uh, the drive up to Bedford this week? I'm looking forward to a good atmosphere. I think it's a uh... I mean, it's a very crucial game for both teams. Uh, and, of course, I mean, for the North Coast League title, uh, it, has a, it has a lot to do with that. So I'm, I'm expecting a really high-powered game and some great football. All right. Well, Anthony, uh, thanks a lot, and best of luck uh, in your Week 9 game against Benedictine. And we'll uh, look forward to more from you guys uh, uh, at the end of the week. Uh, thank you, and thanks for having me on the show. All right. Uh, well, uh, we, sticking with the, uh, the competition theme here, uh, I want to mention our feature that we have currently going on on uh, Cleveland.com, the high school sports team. We are conducting a poll of the best high school football helmets in Northeast Ohio. We've got uh, pictures of 
uh, more than 130, uh, 100, very many uh, um, helmets. And right now, uh, the leader among the helmets is Benedictine. They have uh, more than 719 votes, 8% uh, of the vote there. Streetsboro, St. Ignatius, and St. Edward are also in the mix. Great, we're back now with our three very talented players, and we're going to hit them with some hard-hitting questions. Uh, coming um, away from the X's and O's in football, um, and still some football-related questions, but some off-the-field things as well. First things first, uh, put on your football expert cap. Who finishes the season as the Browns quarterback? Go, Jamie. I think the fans are going to want to see Manziel. I don't think he should play, but I think the fans are going to make him get in. Joe. Uh, I hope I hope they stick with Hoyer, but uh, I think they're going to go with Manziel eventually. Draymond, fans are going with the out. alum. Uh, alum, of course. Hi, um, Brian Hoyer. Yeah. All right. Um, what song pumps you up the most before games, JD? Uh, I think till uh, I can't remember the name of the song. Till I Collapse by Eminem. I think that's the name of the song. Yeah, it is. Joe. I usually listen to a little Eminem. A uh, few, a uh, couple albums usually. All right, great, Eminem. Uh, Go ahead, Joe. Drake. There's a song called Club Here. Okay, oh, sounds good. I mean, I'm having Drake in here. Do um, you have any pregame superstitions, JD? Uh, no, not really. I just kind of like to be by myself so I can focus on the game. Joe, what about you? I usually just put all my stuff on the same way. Okay, same order. And Draymond? Nah, no, just get there and listen to music. All right, sounds good. Just getting down to business here. Uh, favorite subject in school, JD? Um, probably chemistry. What about you, Joe? I like history. History? And um, I, like, I like science. Science, okay. What's, uh, you know, your coaches, you hear them nonstop through four years of high school. What's something that your coach said, your head coach says all the time? Uh, he always talks about toughness and being tougher. What about you, Jeff? Uh, being focused, mental aspect of the game. Enjoy that? Uh, just being a man for others. Great. Um, now, when you're not focusing on football, watching film, what television show do you like to watch the most, JD? Uh, I enjoy NCIS. Okay, NCIS. And Joe? Uh, anything sports, Sports Center. Okay, so ESPN. Draymond? Uh, show called Key and Peel. Key and Peel? All right, sounds good. Pretty funny. Um, now, you've gone through uh, a lot of different home games, road games. What's the best theme that you've seen the student section do? Uh, well, one of our seniors at Menor passed away a little bit ago from cancer, mm -hmm. and her favorite color was purple, mm -hmm. so our student section had purple on, so that was neat to see. You guys wear the purple socks, right? Yep. Okay, great. Joe? Uh, we did a USA theme a couple weeks ago. That looked pretty cool. And Jeremiah? The yeah, same USA, th USA theme. USA theme? Great. Um, what celebrity would you want to meet the most, Jim? Um, maybe President Obama, just because he's got all the power. All right. So that's good. Joe? <laughs> that's a hard one. Uh, I'm going to say Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel? Just want to see what he talks like in person. Draymond? Oh, LeBron James. LeBron James. All right. Well, we'll see who gets to do that first out of the three of you. Who's the best player in the NFL, Jimmy? Uh, I'm going to go with Luke Keekley. I'm a Carolina Panthers fan. All right. Sounds good. Joe? I'm going to say right now, uh, DeMarco Murray. He's having a great Murray, season. Yeah. All those 100-yard games. Draymond? J.J. Watt. J.J. Watt? Yeah. All right. Positions. <laughs> sounds good. Uh, if you could have any superpower, what would it be, J.D.? Uh, I think I'd like to fly. I'd like to fly. All right. Mm. Sounds good. Make the game easy. Yeah. Joe? Uh, I like that freeze guy in The Incredibles. Okay. Like freeze All right. You want to freeze people? Yeah. Uh, and Draymond? Super speed. Super speed? Yeah, like yeah. Flash. All right, sounds good. All three of them would come in handy, I guess. I don't know about freezing people on the field. But, um, what's your hidden talent, if you have one, JD? Uh, I don't really have a hidden talent. What you see is what you get. <laughs> Joe, got a hidden talent? I can't think of one. Draymond? Well, I, I make a um, it's water sound in my mouth. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's like... <laughs> wow, <that's> <laughs> obviously the best out of the three, pretty cool. All right, last question. Um, I think it might be a game night for some of you, but what are you going to be for Halloween, J.D.? Uh, I think I'm pretty scary as my, as my own, so. All right, <laughs> we'll see if Joe agrees on Thursday. And Joe, <laughs> <laughs> what about you? What are you going to be on Halloween? Uh, I, I don't know, I had a few ideas. I forget what I was going to go with. All right, yeah, I, <laughs> maybe you can go as Mitch. Yeah, I could. Uh, I, I could pull that yourself. off. Yourself? Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right, guys. Well, we're glad to have you on. Uh, good luck this week, and uh, we'll be talking with you more throughout the season in the playoffs. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Back to the pop quiz now. How many undefeated teams were in the Cleveland.com Top 25 poll this week? The answer is A, seven. 
congratulations to all of you that uh, successfully chose that. We'll be back next week with another question. And um, we also now are going to turn our heads, turn our attention to uh, our film session segment where we look at some of the best plays that happen each week. And we've got, uh, this one comes courtesy of our own uh, reporter, Joe Noga. And uh, just a great play in the St. Ignatius game uh, that he Our last segment of the day is pred prediction time. Um, we have been getting a lot better with these recently. Scott was 3-0. This is our could, should, will predictions. And last week he was 3-0. He, including, um, you said that Ignatius would beat Moeller. So uh, congratulations to you. You nailed that one. And um, while we throw ours out there, hashtag any varsity if you want to put your own could, should, will predictions, agree, disagree with ours. I'll get things started here. I think that Brexville could end Berea Mid Park's win streak on Friday. Uh, I think Valley Forge could uh, beat Garfield Heights, clinch a share of the uh, the NRC River Division, Lake Division. Lake uh, Division I'm going to hear the boos here. Uh, St. Edward and St. Ignatius could go 0 and 2 against Moeller and Xavier. A couple years ago, they were both trailing in the mm -hmm. second half and had to rally uh, to to win on that trip. Uh, Again, uh, it could be an 0-2 uh, weekend down in, in Cincinnati for the Division One teams. All right, with my should, I'm going to go with a team that's sort of been forgotten since they lost to Midview. It's Avon, and I think for the third straight week, they will put up at least 50 points. Uh, I'm going to go down to the, the PTC, mm -hmm. and uh, I think Crestwood uh, could uh, clinch a share of the title, uh, county division title, or metro division title, rather, mm -hmm. uh, against Kent Roosevelt, which has owned that division in recent years. Joe? I got uh, Brunswick should end rival Strongsville's playoff hopes on the road. All right, with my will prediction, Stowe will get a huge win by beating Illyria. Scott? Oh, one of us is going to be wrong, so I'm going to go the opposite way. All I'm right. going to say Illyria will beat Stowe and, and get revenge on uh, last year's two losses. All right. And, uh, All right. I'm going to ask for protection here uh, <laughs> when you guys got to help me out. Uh, Mitch Godani will throw two touchdown passes in a Hudson loss to Menor on Thursday. Oh, well, that's, that's, pretty persistent. that's a stacked that's prediction. you got to have a lot go right with that one. But we'll see who gets, uh, who gets most of them right. Uh, I would like for the first time, hopefully, that to be me, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, that's it for NEO Varsity Live. I want to thank all of you for joining us here. Um, let us know if there's anything you'd like to see in the future. Hashtag NEO Varsity. Drop a comment down in the bottom of the webpage you're looking at now. And uh, we'll see you next week, Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Thanks for joining us.